to and hello i'm gonna stop the dishwasher because it's kind of loud and welcome i think i have enough light i've been adjusting because i've never done this before and i think it's a little bit dark now on the on the counter so i may make some adjustments while folks are coming in mm, look dark too much stuff maybe better pan okay well you know what at the end of the day here I am and I am excited I am very very excited I swear I promise I had all of this worked out and you know what I'll just pick up stuff and and um, make sure you guys can see everything that I have in the camera so welcome to at home with Norma day two Super excited to be here. It has been a tremendous 24 hours since I decided that I would all of a sudden have an overnight um, sort of cooking show. I think Jennifer Gardner calls hers a pretend cooking show. And so uh, yesterday I promised that I was going to give you positive, no complaining zones in here. And I was going to encourage you and teach you things. And so that is the goal. We have no other goal than that. It's to encourage you and to teach you things. So I want you to share this with anyone that you know that's discouraged. I want you to share this with anyone that you know that is super frustrated. I want you to share this with anybody who loves sugar, anybody who loves cheesecake, anybody who is a fantastic cook. Um, and so we're going to do two things. Yesterday was kind of an intro, and I talked about why I'm here, why I'm doing this, why I felt led to do this. And so today is going to be about demonstration. So y'all ready? I'm ready. I am super, super excited. Um, I have. I, I warn you though that I have the camera a little bit far from me um, because I wanted you guys to be able to see the display so I can't see any comments. So I won't be able to see any comments. And if I turn on my phone so that I can see comments, I'm concerned that somebody will call, you know, inevitably the phone will ring, blah, blah, blah. So um, uh, I may try that if later on I feel like I have no choice. But for now, I just kind of want to get in and I want to get started. Um, listen, if you don't have a KitchenAid stand mixer, you can still make this recipe. This is this recipe is not contingent on that. It may mean that you want to make sure that your bricks of cream cheese are super soft because now you'll be making everything by hand. But when I tell you how easy this recipe is to make, when you see this and how few ingredients, how quickly it comes together, you're going to ask yourself, why didn't I ever know? I'm going to say you're welcome in advance. I'm so excited. Okay, so today, we are making our Southern Pecan um, Cheesecake. So I want to um, throw some things out um, right away. So stand mixer, pan mixer would be fine. Tiny bit of salt. Uh, graham crackers, you could make your own. I cheated. The best quality cream cheese that you can purchase. Let me tell you something. I have two of them almost open, and then I kept one in the can. These are the Philadelphia. This is full fat. Don't buy any that are like fat free or a third fat. You don't want that. You need that full body flavor. Cheesecake is not one of those things that you're going to be making every day anyway. So make sure that you get the best quality you can afford. Sometimes they go on sale, especially around the holidays. Let me kind of warn you about freezing cream cheese. Does it freeze? Yeah, it does. Does it taste great? Absolutely. But it does lose its texture a little bit. Does that matter in the grand scheme of things? No, but if you happen to freeze it because you find that, you know, you oh, it was three for five dollars, I didn't need that many, whatever. Um, just know that the, the consistency will change. Okay, so that. Eggs. How do I know how many eggs? For how many ever bricks of cream cheese is how many eggs? And the original recipe called for four bricks. I find that it's too heavy, it's too dense. So I like to use three, for me three is the magic number, and then three eggs, okay? We talked about this pecan. Uh, we have a little bit of vanilla. Uh, let's see, butter, don't, I have the butter right here. Butter, okay, right here. All right, so let's go over that one more time because I just want you to see how few ingredients. Cream cheese, eggs, flour, brown sugar, a 
pinch of salt and vanilla. That makes the actual recipe itself. In other words, the filling. And then for the crust, we have um, graham crackers, graham cracker crust or crumbs, a little bit of butter, and then in this case, we have a little bit of white sugar. Now, I know the counter looks a little bit crowded. It's because, again, the iPad is only so big and I wanted to be able to squeeze this stuff in. But to make things easier and so that we can uh, move some things out of the way, I'm gonna do some adjustment, but I just kinda wanted you to see everything else. Oh, 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 and let me not forget, pure maple syrup. I mean, who doesn't love pure maple syrup, for goodness sake? All right. That's going to be later. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the crust. And we want to do that just because we want to get it out of the way. Now, I made sure that I have all of my measuring um, utensils because typically I just throw this in and throw that in. I've been making this recipe for about, I don't know, 20 years, something like that. So, I mean, it's a really, really old one. It is the one recipe more than any that's uh, requested whenever I go anywhere. So, all right, about a cup-ish. I think the recipe actually calls for a cup and a quarter. So, for your sake, I'll do a cup and a quarter. All right, a cup and a quarter. Here we go. Okay? So, a cup and a quarter. Now, already I'm changing the graham cracker crust recipe because it calls for a half of a, um, a quarter of a cup of white sugar. In my professional opinion, that's just too much sugar. So for a cup and a quarter of brown um, of um, cracker crumbs, in, in my opinion, I like to do more like an eighth of sugar. Now it's one of those things that you get to kind of mix it yourself, but I find that the original recipe is a little too sweet for me. Now. Luckily for both of us, it's uh, the amount of sugar does not doesn't necessarily um, change the recipe base at all. It's still going to be perfectly fine. Again, I just like a little bit of sugar. Okay, and let's face it, there's plenty of sugar in the actual cake recipe itself. Okay, now this is one fourth cup of butter. Now I'm going to show you. That's it. It's a half a stick. Be careful, and I'm going to tell you to be careful because if you just look at this recipe and you stick this butter in and you start to mix this up and you don't take your time in doing so, what's going to happen is you're going to say, oh, that's not enough butter. And then you're going to go, I think, you know, it just needs a little bit more butter. No, you just need a little bit more patience because it needs to be mixed. And I'll make sure that I lift this up for the camera. Because again, with all your comments and people coming live, I can't, I can't see what you can see. And I think I tried the light ahead of me. I tell you what, I'm gonna put this. I have two, two professional lights on. You should see me. I'm doing something here. I have two professional lights on, and I still can't tell. I swear the trial run was perfect. I'm gonna put this light on, and then somebody yell yes or no if it's too bright. All right, somebody give me a yes or somebody give me a no about that light. I think that's good. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I want you guys to see what this looks like, okay? I'm gonna come a little closer. Okay, so it's, the butter is goes all the way through. So it's not terribly wet, you see that? Okay, see the butter is not, okay. I mean, yeah, the butter, all right. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda mix this until it's a little bit flat. I want you to know that if you're the kind of person who likes a lot of crust on your cheesecake recipe, knock yourself out. Instead of doing a cup and a quarter of graham cracker crumbs, you can double that recipe. I don't like a lot of crust. I like a lot of cheesecake. So I know that some people make enough crust that you can actually kind of build it up on the sides and then just have that like nice thick layer. If you decide you want to do that, make sure you fridge it for a little while first because otherwise when you bake it, the graham cracker crumbs, and again, if you add too much butter, it's going to stick to the bottom of the container and you don't want it to do that. All right. So now here's another little inside trick. I need this to flatten. I'm going to take the bottom of one of my uh, measuring cups 
and then I am literally going to flatten this. And I'm going to show you what this looks like, okay? I'm going to show you what this looks like. And you want to make sure that you have an even amount of graham cracker crumbs. And I promise you, you are going to be so surprised that this recipe yields enough um, crust for a nine inch spring form pan. I forgot to talk to you guys about a spring form pan. I'm assuming that y'all know what it is, but if you don't, I'll, when I come closer, I'm gonna lift this up. I wanna show you this first. Look at this, look at that. You see how flat that is? See, that's nice and flat. See how that's not moving? I don't want a whole lot, but it is enough. I know it looks a little shallow here, but believe it or not, it is enough to cover the hole. Okay. Now, well, you know what we're gonna, now a spring form pan is a nine inch round pan and it has a release. And so what happens is when the, and you'll see, cause I actually have one already in the oven. When I pull that one out, should have gone off already. Um, um, when I, when I pull this off, what's going to happen is, um, the cake will release. And so again, you'll see that in the one that I already had in the oven. I'm going to put this off to the side. Now for the nitty gritty. Okay, this is the good stuff, guys. This is it. So let's go ahead and start. Like I said, I promise I will give you better visuals. Now somebody might want to give me some advice. I went to Best Buy today. By the way, let me tell you what that experience was like as I assembled this. Um, Best Buy has curbside service. So you're driving to Best Buy and then you order what it is you want or if somebody comes to your car and you, you know, you, you open it up on your computer and you say, or cell phone, hey, I want this SKU number. And then somebody goes into the store and they call you and you pay for it and then they bring the item to the car. That's fantastic. We should have that kind of curb service after all the coronavirus stuff is over. Okay. Um, this this is fantastic. So again, I have a KitchenAid. You, you don't have to have a KitchenAid again. Um, this is my favorite paddle. I have three paddles because I have two KitchenAids. I bought this one online. I think I went into the store to purchase it. It was $50. So I went online to Amazon and found it for 20 bucks. Can't beat that. The reason that this is so fantastic is because when you're baking something or you're cooking something, you know, mixing it, it really kind of scrapes that bowl. I will still scrape along the way, but this does help. All right, let's assemble our inside. Okay, I feel like we need to have a little bit of music in the background. After all of this nonsense is over, I'm still gonna do these videos, but I'm gonna need somebody to come in here and um, give me a little life. Help your girl out a little bit. Okay, so we have three sticks of, of bricks of cream cheese. So hey, while I'm opening these bricks of cream cheese, I want to tell you something. Yesterday, I got a lot of good feedback. Three people said to me, how hilarious is this? Three people said to me, hey, I broke the cow bar in the bathroom and I can't put it back. Is that one of the things you can teach us? So I said, um, sure, okay. You know what I'm looking for, right? I'm looking for what I did with that last brick of cream cheese. Here we go. How funny is that? So we will be talking about that at some point. At some point, we're going to be working on painting tricks and tips because let's face it, I know more about painting than anything in the universe. Um, we're going to do drywall repair. So I'll take you all up to the garage and we can do that. And whatever else you guys continue, my sister suggested we make some Spanish food. So if y'all want some Puerto Rican food, I'm just saying, holla at your girl. We can make that happen. Okay. All right. So we have our three bricks of cream cheese. All right. So I'm going to lock this down. You don't have to go super fast. That's not the goal. It doesn't really matter. We just want to mush this really, really well. So I'm going to get this started. Oh, it's beautiful. Listen, if you forget to leave your cream cheese and your eggs out for a few hours before you get ready to cook. Uh, turn your oven on at your 350 when you get ready to bake and then put your cream cheese on top of the oven. For my oven, it warms everything that's on the top and so it, 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 um, it brings everything that I need to room temperature. 
baking in general, you want all of your ingredients at room temperature. Uh, your eggs, your butter. Now, I live in a hundred-year-old house, and it's cold. And I appreciate that we renovated last year, and that I have insulation now. It's still cold. How cold? It's cold enough that unless I turn the heat up on 75 and have a space heater, my yeast won't mix with my milk to make uh, uh, cinnamon rolls, which I absolutely adore. Yes, I kid you not. All right. So I'm going to come up a little bit higher. Oh, that's beautiful, guys. That That's beautiful. Okay. So I said I want to just kind of show you along the way. It's super smooth. Kind of looks like drywall mud. I don't know how good you can see that. But it's super smooth, super thick. We haven't done anything else. All right. Now, I am not going to kind of bring it down yet. I need to add a liquid. And in this case, the liquid is actually the eggs. So I want to add just one at a time. I'm going to bring this back. And I'm actually going to crack these into here. And at the same time, all right, we got three eggs. And then we're just going to mix one at a time, even though I have these three. Now, the cheesecake in the oven already is starting to smell amazing. So I need to check on it. Hold on a second, guys. Here we go. Holy moly. Oh, if you could just smell that. So here's the thing that I didn't remember when I had this great idea about doing a live um, cooking show for you. Here's what I didn't remember. Um, they always cook the same thing beforehand. So I had to come home from work today after I drove to South Bend because I had to talk to my employees over there. And I had to come home and make a cheesecake so I could have a demonstration for the cheesecake. All right, let me get that out. I'm so excited, guys. Okay. Holy moly. That's a beauty. Okay, but hey, hey not yet. Don't jump the gun. All right. We'll just leave that down for now. Okay, so. What do we have next? Our eggs. Okay, one at a time. So we have one, and just kind of let that mix pretty well. I'll bring that up a little bit. After I'm done mixing in all three of the eggs, we will absolutely scrape down the side before adding any of the sugar or anything like that. I want to make sure that these eggs are incorporated all the way. Okay, man, you can totally see the difference. It's definitely a liquid now. Okay, perfect. See, did need a whole lot. Now I'm just going to scrape this bowl. But I'm not just going to scrape the sides. I'm actually going to go ahead and take this off. And I'm actually going to scrape it. Now, remember, we it was a salad before. Now look what the eggs have done. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm just kind of getting that very bottom. It, the, the paddle has done a phenomenal job. So I'm actually okay there. I can put this right back. So hey, guys. Yesterday... Well, we were chatting about kind of like complaining and how it breaks the heart of God to complain. A wonderful friend of mine reached out and said, hey, Norma, can you talk about something else? He said, I have a lot of friends who are really anxious right now. And, uh, and, and, and that just really touched my heart. Um, I'm going to get back to that in a second. One cup of dark brown sugar. Okay, so for three sticks, we're going to start with one cup. I'm going to tell you something, though. The cake that I just took out of the oven, for whatever reason, felt like it needed maybe like an extra fourth. So here's what we're going to do, and here's what I recommend. If you have light brown sugar, in my opinion, light brown sugar, you need a little bit more sugar than if you use uh, the dark brown. But I prefer the dark brown because I love the richness of the molasses in that. So... For sure, it's my favorite. All right, I'm going to dump this in, and then we're going to mix this. And let's see if I can talk a little bit louder. kind of feel like I'm a little bit low, but I don't mean to be. Especially for you guys who know me, and I'm Puerto Rican, and I generally talk fast and loud. All right, well, this is mixing really well. Um, actually, I'm going to add, oh, I said I was going to be a good girl. All right, I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. 
Now I love vanilla. Make sure if at all possible, it's authentic vanilla. And it's gonna also yield a beautiful, um, beautiful, beautiful color. Okay, and real quickly before I talk about stress and anxiety, the recipe actually doesn't call for salt, but I find, this is just me, I find that if you use uh, a a fourth of a teaspoon, not a lot, I'm actually gonna go with a fourth of a teaspoon, it kind of balances out that sugar just by hair. All right, so I'm gonna add that. Okay, now the color and the texture has changed in its totality. All right, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of flour, and that's pretty much just to kind of get it all um, like, a, like a binder. Oh, wrong one, that's the sugar. Um, so a friend of mine was talking about anxiety and anxiousness, and I just kind of wanted to, I wanted to throw some numbers at you while we're mixing our cake. I just kind of wanted to throw some numbers at you for a little bit of perspective. In America, we have about 330 million people, roughly. So 1%, what's 1%? 1% 1 of 330 million is 3,300,000? Is that right? Somebody say that. So is that right? I, I can't even see. I think it is. Whatever 1% of 330 million is. And let's see, 10% would be 33 million. Yes, okay, so 3 million, roughly, 1%. And then I was doing the math about exactly how many people have um, the coronavirus. And even worldwide, not just in America. And so if 1% of, you know, I feel like I need to ask Siri how much, why am I, I'm having a brain fart because I'm on, I'm on, um, I'm on Facebook Live, so let's just do that math, shall we? 300 million, right, times 1%. It's 3 million. Why did I doubt myself? It's 3 million. Okay, so that would be 1%. If 1% of the world had the coronavirus, we would be at 3 million people. But we don't, okay? So if one half of a percentage is about a little bit more than uh, 1.5 million, well, 1.5 million don't have the coronavirus. Okay, so one fourth, one fourth of a percentage of people also don't have the coronavirus. And I'm saying all that to say a lot of the fear that we have, a lot of the anxiety, a lot of the uncertainty comes when we begin to fear something that more than likely is never going to happen to you, is never going to happen to someone you know, is never going to happen in, in your neighborhood, is never going to happen on your block. So I just wanted to put some of those numbers into perspective. I am not, you know, downplaying, you know, the seriousness. I know they were self-quarantining and all of that. But I just wanted to put some perspective. When you start looking at the numbers of this, um, I just want to, I, you know, I pray and I hope that that really helps you um, to kind of feel better. Uh, about the situation and where we are. Okay, so here's what I like to do before I ever empty out uh, my recipe. I like to go back and say that I, uh, all the ingredients out loud so that I'm absolutely sure I didn't miss anything. Here we go. Cream cheese, yes. But um, eggs, yes. Flour, yes. Salt, yes. Brown sugar, yes. And uh, let's see. I do. Oh, and vanilla, yes. Okay, so all of my ingredients are in. So now, here's what I'm doing. I'm taking my spring form, form pan, okay? And now I am just going to pour my cheesecake into my spring form pan. I will take a rubber spatula because I want all of the goodness. And because I did a really good job at making sure that the Six at room temperature because I did a really good job at making sure it was mixed really well. It's very smooth and I don't have any nasty chunks at the bottom. So if that happens to you and you're wondering, man, what happened? I should not have ended up with nasty chunks at the bottom. You didn't mix it well enough. It's easy, you know, easy fix and, and you can just kind of fix it for the next time. Okay, now I'm gonna try to bring this. I had one little, I'm not sure. I'm gonna make sure that you guys can see that. See that nice? See that? So it's kind of wet. All right, now, we're gonna do something 
you weren't expecting. You see this pan? Okay. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to take our cheesecake and we pan and we are going to sit our springform pan smack dab in the middle. You know what? Let me kind of move some stuff out of the way. I wanna I'll move this out of the way because we don't need that anymore. There we go. Alright. Now we have our cheesecake. To this, we are actually gonna add some water. Now I'm gonna tell you why. Because even though I have a convection oven, let me tell you what a convection oven is. A convection oven is an oven that essentially has a fan in it. So when you turn your oven to 350 degrees, instead of the heat just coming from the top or the bottom or both, a fan throws that heat all around. And so in theory, that's great. But this cream cheese, the only binder, I mean the eggs will act somewhat as a binder, is those little two cups of, uh, two uh, tablespoons of flour. So we need this to cook evenly all the way around and all the way up. And the best way we can do it is to submerge the pan itself into another pan that has water. What's going to happen is the oven is going to heat up the water in this pan to 350 degrees. That's what the oven is set for, 350 degrees. Now, when all of the water heats up to 350 degrees, it's going to guarantee that the entire pie bakes at the same level at the same time because the heat is evenly distributed. I would love to take credit for this. This is a French thing and it has some French name and I didn't make it up, so I have no idea what it is. Okay, I'm gonna put this one in the oven. All right, so how long? 350 degrees for one hour, okay, one hour. Okay, so now we have it set for one hour. If you decide that you wanna make a four brick cream uh, cheesecake, you perfectly can, know that it will increase your time. Technically, that cake, I think this one probably cooked I don't know, probably an hour and 15 minutes. It actually is quite a while. Now, cheesecake can be a little bit tricky to determine whether or not it's done. Um, having said that, let me grab this one. Okay, so let me show you this one. All right, that's what it looks like. Okay, you see that? Doesn't that look good? That looks good, doesn't it? It's steaming hot. All right. Remember we talked about that spring form pan? Here's what we're gonna do. So I'm just going to take this, I'm going to go around this. Now it can be tricky to tell if a cheesecake is cooked all the way through because unlike a regular cake, uh, if you pierce it, it is going to come out some measure wet. Cheesecake is kind of a cross between a, a cake and a custard, if you will, even not a pie. But So I still am going to poke it in the middle and then it should come out clean-ish. That's kind of the best description I can give you. Clean-ish. Now, I want to note something else. Remember earlier I used that brown sugar? This, this is a basic recipe for what I like to call a, a fall pie or a fall cheesecake. So if I'm, let's say, okay, so this is a southern pecan. Southern pecan, if I want to do apples with cinnamon, if I want to do anything pumpkin-ish, uh, if I want to do, let's see, mm, what other flavors? Well, sometimes orange, it kind of depends because orange can be summer. It depends on what you pair with the orange. Well, all of these recipes I use with brown. And that brown, again, that molasses kind of adds a richness. Now, if I'm going with a summer airy um, cheesecake, I'm going to use white sugar because I don't want all that extra molasses. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm, if I'm going to do, let's say, uh, I'm going to make a lemon curd cheesecake, or if I'm going to make a orange, but it's going to be more citrusy again and more summer, then I'm definitely going to um, rely on that white sugar and kind of make it more pure. Now, remember earlier the way that I said, hey, make sure that you measure out that sugar. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to start off at about one cup of sugar per three bricks of cream cheese. 
and then taste it and see if does it need more sugar you'll know if it needs more sugar then add as you need generally speaking it'll never need less than that all right so you just see i took the knife and i went all the way around and now we're just going to release this so you pull that spring spring forms you pull that spring and this is what you get you get a beautiful pot now i'm going to grab a, a tray i want you guys to be able to see this so i'm going to grab this now One of the most unique things about this recipe is um, what I'm actually getting ready to do, which I'm going to show you. I'm going to take this little plate here, okay? And then here are my pecans. Remember we called it a southern pecan, okay? Here are my pecans, and here's what I'm going to do. I am going to sprinkle these pecans on this dish like that. And then while we're chatting, I'm going to put this in the oven for only four minutes. And I want these to be toasted. Now you have to be very careful. By the time you turn around, have a conversation, go to the bathroom, those four minutes are up. And if you leave these in too long, the pecans will burn really fast. So they're very fragile, if you will, believe it or not. So I'm gonna stick these in the oven. Okay. So in our four minutes, here's what I wanna tell you. We're not going to get anywhere in life if we are either complaining or anxious. And so today I was having my prayer time and I was kind of worshiping and singing and I was I wanted to make sure that when I came on today that I was completely prepared to tell you what it is that you need to hear, what it is that you need to know in this season. So I kind of was just kind of quiet, letting the music play, just kind of, you know, kind of closing my eyes to make sure that I was prepared to bring my heart here in a way that was pure so it doesn't feel like, you know, um, it's one more lecture, or, you know, one more you know, feeling of sort of being overwhelmed. That's not what I'm doing here. I wrote a couple of notes, and uh, I just want to, I just want to, I'm going to tell you this. Here's the thing about anxiety. For the vast majority of people, we, we weren't, um, we didn't come out of the womb anxious. And so what happened is we learned how to be anxious over time. And so we learned it. And the good news is, if you learned anxiety, you can unlearn it. And so if one of the questions that you have is like, Norma, I'm, I'm overwhelmed and I don't know how not to be, I'm going to give you some steps, okay? So either get a pen and paper or make sure you uh, play this back. And when you play it back, I want you to write these scriptures down. I'm going to give you some scripture, but I'm going to give you just some really good overall practice skills. Um, Here's number one. Set your phone for four, five times. I don't care if it's 10 times. I don't care if it's hourly. Set your phone for how many ever times a day. And when it goes off, you are going to separate yourself. I don't care if it's for one minute or 30 seconds or if it's five minutes if you have. And I want you to practice peace. See, because you learned how to practice anxiety, whether you realize it or not. So now you know how, need to learn how to practice peace. It is not going to come to you. Um, whenever I do public speaking, generally speaking, people ask me to talk about like personality types and all of that. I am always talking about cognitive dissonance. If you don't know what cognitive dissonance is, I'm going to tell you right now. Cognitive dissonance, cognitive is the brain, right? Dissonance is a, a type of warring. So it's like a warring that goes on in your brain. It's when you want to believe one thing, but fundamentally you believe something else. It's my four minutes up, so you gotta be careful. But you fundamentally, and it, I can smell those pecans, you fundamentally believe something else. That causes the war. So now you have to uh, declare war on erroneous thinking and that only happens one way and that's with repetition. So you are, if you're anxious today, you're going to be anxious tomorrow. But you can start tonight, set your phone. Okay, well what does it look like to practice peace, right? What does it, okay, well first of all, it looks like saying a lot of words. Now, I'm not talking about thinking, I'm not telling you that. I'm saying that you need to say some stuff out loud. There's some declarations that you need to make over you, there's some declarations that you need to make over your family, and there's some declarations that you need to make over your, um, over your circumstances. And I'm gonna tell you something, you cannot complain and practice peace at the same time. Do you hear me? 
You cannot. So if you think that you're going to spend half of the day complaining about people on Facebook or on the phone with your girlfriends, and then you're going to set your time and you're going to practice peace, that's not going to work. It just isn't. Let me get my pecan. I took these pecans and I uh, I bought pecan halves because it was less expensive, I don't know why, than buying them already crumbled. And so I crumbled myself. I crumbled them myself. And now what I'm going to do is I am simply going to take my pecans and I'm just going to pour them over my dry cake. I bet you didn't think I was going to do that, did you? Okay, so I'm going to take my spoon and then I'm just going to evenly disperse these. Now, if you have OCD tendencies, I got your back. Just buy yourself some whole pecans or half, half pecan halves and, and put them on decoratively really, really pretty. Just remember that if you do that, you have to make room for your, your, you to cut the pie because if you don't, um, your knife will always hit the, peca the pecans, which drive me bananas. Okay, now, I'm still talking about anxiety, but I want you to hold on a second. The difference between this cheesecake and 99% of all cheesecakes you will ever taste is that this one we eat out of the oven. So it is very much like a, that kind of custardy texture. And the first time you have cheesecake out of the oven, it may seem like, mm, that's kind of weird, but that's because it is, it's completely different. If you don't like that, guess what? No problem. Just take your cheesecake and uh, let it get to room temperature. You either eat it then, or you can take uh, it after it cools 100% and then put it in the fridge if you'd like. All right, this is the secret of all secrets. 100% maple syrup. You can know you cannot use Aunt Jemima. No, you cannot use Aunt Jemima. All right, so I'm going to pour this in, and then this is just, now you need to do this when it's hot, because if you do this when it's cold, it just kind of falls off, but when you do it with the, when the, when the cake is, is super warm, then it kind of absorbs it, which is fantastic. So then I am going to take this, and I am just going to slowly drizzle this one fourth real maple syrup over here. That's it. That's it. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Now, you may say, man, that looks like it's a lot. Actually, it isn't. It's very little, but I really want to just kind of be, uh, make sure that I get it everywhere. Okay. Isn't that beautiful? Would you like me to bring it closer so you can see? Sure. No problem. Okay. I'm going to cut it, and when I cut it, stop it. Yes. Well, hi, pretty girl Amanda. That is good, Everett, you're right. It's very good. There we go. Now, sometimes if I'm impatient, I take it out of the oven before it's ready and then er, it's just okay. Today I was a very good girl because I had so many things to do. Okay. Um, so before I cut it, I wanna say this. Um, you need to practice, you really need to practice if you are uh, full of anxiety, it's going to affect everyone around you, and it's very, very hurtful. And so this is a wonderful time for you to, again, set that phone. Now, don't, don't not reach out to people if you're struggling. Don't let that negate you um, or keep you from, you know, reaching out for food if that's what you need. Or maybe calling a friend and saying, hey, you know what, Norma talked about, this is how you practice uh, peace, but quite frankly, I'm, I'm lost about how to do it. You know, maybe can, can we talk about it over the phone or whatever, uh, a FaceTime video. But for me, peace looks like um, everybody out of the room, if at all possible, uh, some praise and worship music, and then I close my eyes and I just think about Jesus, either Jesus on the cross and what he did for me, or I'm, I love, I love the idea of me sitting at his feet. It's like one of my, it's one, I'm not gonna lie, it's one of my favorite things. Sometimes, and this is me being as open with you as I could ever be, 
sometimes I'm not just sitting at his feet, but I'm kissing his hand right where I knew he took that that wound for me. And it allows me to just uh, just love on him and him love on me. And it's generally that I do that. Um, I, I want to give you a couple of scriptures before I go. Before I cut this pie and before I go, I do want to give you a couple of scriptures. Um, and that's, I want you to remember that the way that we protect our children, Jesus protects us. And you have to know that because he is the ultimate father. I also want to say that in 2 Timothy 1 and 17, the Bible says that he did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and peace and a sound mind. And these are the things. So even if you're walking around and you're asking yourself a lot of questions, or you know that your mouth wants to just spit something, spew something out of anger or frustration, put a scripture in your mouth and keep eating it. Uh, so that kind of looks like uh, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. Jesus. I'm going to keep saying it so that I don't say anything foolish. Um, John 14, 1 says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Uh, Luke 12, 22 says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you're going to eat or what you're going to uh, what your uh, what your body is going to wear. Don't worry about your life. Look at the birds of the air. He says, hey, the birds don't sow. They don't reap a harvest, and I still take care of them. And remember yesterday we talked about sowing and reaping. See, and that's the benefit that we have this famous uh, Proverbs 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. And then lastly, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Don't be anxious about anything. In every situation, by prayer and petition. Did you know that prayer and petition are two different things? Prayer is like, oh, Lord, I love you. You're amazing. Um, but petition is like, okay, Lord, for real, though, this is what I need. And so I need you to do this. I need that peace. I need you to do this. I, I need you to provide for me. I need you to give me an answer. And I don't know who this is for, but I'm going to tell you something. Where the Lord doesn't give you money, honey, he will give you favor. And favor is worth a lot more than money. Um, it says, so make your request before God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind where it will guard it or guide it toward Christ Jesus. That's it. Toward Christ Jesus, toward Christ Jesus. Okay, cutting the pie. Now I've called it a pie, I've called it a cake, I've called it everything, but ultimately, you know, it's soft, okay? So this is not like uh, uh, super, super soft. Remember, because it's still warm, don't ask me how many calories are in this cake during the coronavirus. Zero. That's what I say. That's what I say. Don't argue with me. My bad. Okay. This is what happens when you have a brand new cooking show. And the one thing that I didn't get was a server, so I'll serve myself with this spoon. And then I'm going to end this, allowing you to see what this looks like. Okay. And here's my end. Okay. So you kind of see the density but it should not, um, it won't be raw by any stretch of the imagination. If you're uncertain, uh, if you decide that you're gonna make it, just go ahead and try to make it and then reach out to me, you know, any of the ways, direct message, or if you have, again, if you have my cell phone number, call me or whatever. I mean, mostly I'm home. Um, and then I'll tell you, but most likely, now if you decide to do four bricks, I warn you that it's gonna rise really high and then the top of the pie will crack and that's just because, um, it's so dense, but that's okay. So I love you guys. I am so grateful that you've stayed on. Please um, share this. I, I really do hope that it's an inspiration to other people. And I love you all. And you're amazing. And bon appetit. Oh, and now I have two pies. So I need somebody who wants one of these pies, who lives kind of locally, uh, to let me know that they want it for real. And I will drop it off tomorrow. All right, love you. Mwah. Oh, and Jesus loves you too.